sharing what we learn. You know, we don't know everything. We're still learning. It's fascinating to like get with all the different people in this uh, climate area. You know, zone eight, all the way from Jacksonville to uh, you know Louisiana. This is a crazy zone. It's here. a cool it zone is. though. There's so much possibility for uh, growing like fruit trees. You, you also produce uh, products that you sell. Yeah, here, right? yeah. I'm, I've been a registered nurse and studied herbal medicine for 11 years and been experimenting on myself, my family, my community for <laughs> just as long. And now I've got some good good recipes. I, I sell medicines now. And Do you still have uh, elderberry syrup now? Yeah, I'll be making that and still, uh, regularly. I'm going to make another batch probably tomorrow. Very cool. But anyway. Awesome. <laughs> this is Diane Tate, and tell them a little bit about you. Um, well, I first met Renee with East Edible Gardening, and that's how I got into the whole gardening thing down here, because uh, I was new to this climate, because I'm from up north. And so, you know, found her, found Pensacola Organic Garden Club, found Michelle with Pensacola Permaculture, found the Permaculture Group here, and so just looking to expand my knowledge in this area. Awesome. I'm Bill. I just kind of interest. I do a little bit of hiking and kayaking and I hear all these other people pointing out different uh, animals or plants and I just kind of grew up there and just love the idea of being able to walk down the trail and say, hey, this is edible or I can use this or to help me out later. Or, so, just a beginner. Kind of go on. Awesome. Glad you're here. I'm Angela and this is my daughter Callie. Yeah. And Callie had met your daughter through academic team. Say, yeah, my daughter. Yes. She's pretty awesome. If you don't, you'll figure it out quick <laughs> about her. And then Christian, he is my right hand guy on so much stuff. So, all right, so let's get started. If anybody else shows up, we're going to be in the front yard for a little while anyway. And because there was a lady that was supposed to come with a walker, so I left four plants out in the back field that I wanted to talk about off of the walk, but I will include them now, if likely. We'll see, because I do have, we'll finish up uh, buying these regardless, because I have to prepare for the next class. You guys are all welcome to come to this class. I hope you do, because it's, this is going to be cool. The other one's going to be really fun. It's uh, a little bit different. The first plant I want to talk about today is this one. Does anybody know what this is? This is a poor example of this plant. Very poor example. Ah, yes, it's yeah. uh, spiderwort. It is spiderwort, that's right. And it is a tasty plant. Mm -hmm. I like it. It's yeah, that's the one that shows what, you a little bit more what it's like. That's right. This is the easiest. Once you identify it, you know what the plant is, you can see this and identify it as a general rule, especially if you take a nibble of it. But spiderwort will always have, well, when it's blooming or when it's growing out, when it blooms, there'll be two leaves that will be opposite each other, and the bloom will come right out of the top of it. And the bloom should have three petals. One, two, three. With the little orange in the middle. The entire plant above the ground, I don't know, I, I haven't done anything with the roots. Yes, ma'am. Oh, oh, sorry. Yes, Amy, tell me. Okay. So, besides what he has already said, um, the roots, they are laxative. They can also be ground and dried and made into a tea to a um, feminine complaints, PMS and whatnot. Um, it's also, uh, Green Bean has several recipes of spider wart omelet that includes the leaves and the flowers and you can use pretty much how it tastes this. The uh, stems are, can, are very easy to wash this. They can be cooked and braised. That's a square of this candy. And it can be seen. So, um, well that wasn't a very good example, but they'll stain your hands purple if you 
like them. And also, there are little salmons, little blue salmons, and they have little blue hairs on them. And actually, if they're exposed to gamma radiation, they will turn pink. And that's pretty much all I got. <laughs> <laughs> the, the plant, they have, as a salad green, just the leaves, you can eat them raw, you can eat them cooked, just stalks, and I'm going to pull this one out. And the flowers can go in salad. Yeah, the flowers can go in salad or eaten raw. It is very mucilaginous, like she said, almost like aloe. But uh, it is tasty. I mean, it, it's a really tasty food. It's not the type of um, wild edible that you've got to get past a bitter on or anything like that. It's just really, really good. Um, it, feel free to nibble it if you'd like. Yes, ma'am. <coughs> well, I mean, they can pass this around and look at it. And if you want to steal a nibble off of it, do that too. Anybody else got anything to add about spider warp? Anybody want to holler out the Latin name? Oh, um, French gentia, virginica. Mm -hmm. All right. Very, very cool. I was visualizing, but I didn't we know how to pronounce the, it. The trees, uh, just like aloe, too. Yeah, mm. it's used for skin conditions. It uh, helps tone down epilepsy. Yes. Um, if you look at this plant and notice the grass and how, or how it actually when it's young before it starts to sprout up and it's not really young it's just coming back um how the leaves lay the size of them the color of them you will see these all over throughout the yard in this same pattern if you wouldn't have saw the blossom with it you might not have been able to identify it otherwise but, all right i want to let's go to this next plant over here 